Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? This is Jeff from BKJ Mag TV, and this is the BKJ Mag Podcast Experience, and this is season two, episode eleven. This episode is titled "The Review on Kindred," the mini series that has just landed on FX. So far, why um I watched all eight episodes of the series, and let me tell you, after reading the novel by Octavia Butler, which was um, written in the nineteen seventies, I found the series to be well wasn't that good it it didn't um it didn't stick to me um I didn't I didn't really enjoy watching it I felt like there were things that were greatly out of place you know that really gave me like a mixed feeling I didn't really feel the time period of the antebellum south when I watched the series I'll, I'll tell you that It almost felt like it was a prop. And uh, I think a reviewer um, commented on that part. Uh, Let me tell you. First of all, they set the story in 2016. 2016. When the novel was written, it was set in the 1970s. The 1970s. We know what was going on in America during the 1970s. There was the, the rise of the Black Panther Party. There was racial strife coming out of the 1960s. Uh, the Vietnam War was coming to an end. There was a distrust in government because of the Watergate scandal. There were so many things that was happening in 19 in the 1970s. And I felt like the showrunner, he could have, I think it was Jenkins, uh, he could have used, he could have used the 1970s as a definitely um um a place a great starting point to do the series instead he chose 2016 and he chose the iPhone as a tool to uh, to that Dana would use to go back and forth between time periods now um, I'm going to read you an article from Roger Ebert. Um, Roger Ebert was a one of the great um, film reviewers of our time. He passed away many, many years ago. But he was one of our great filmmakers, great film minds of our times. Um, he, When he watched the movie, he gave it um, a great stamp of approval. He would look at it with extreme detail he will let you know if this movie was worth your time because if you could sit there and watch that movie either for an hour two hours three hours four hours he was gonna let you know and he was gonna let you know if that movie was that movie or tv show was good or not but um there were people that took over for him but as he left behind his website and his legacy but coming from this article about kindred i'm gonna read you this article um this article was written by Robert Daniels, um, dated December 13, 2022. So it starts with, following the teasing opening, writer and showrunner Brandon Jacobs Jenkins takes viewers back to two days ago. We learn the identity of the distraught woman at the center of the drama, Dana, who is played, who is played by Marley Johnson. She's recently moved to Los Angeles to break into television, writing after selling her grandmother's New York City townhome. Though she lost her mother and father years ago to a car accident, Dana does does have family in her aunt, a nurse, and her uncle, Alan, a retired police officer. They are concerned about Dana. She seems impulsive and unwell, like her mother. Her white boyfriend, Kevin, is similarly worried. He often catches her screaming as she sleepwalks. See, Dana dreams about living during slavery and appears to all be a terrible nightmare, a fragment of her imagination until she transports herself and Kevin back to antebellum America. How can she return home? What can she... What? Why can she time travel and for what purpose? So these are the questions that they asked. First of all, they weren't really, I will tell you this. They weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. They just met at the bar 
and basically just drove her they connected they made out and they're not even a they're not even a couple uh i will tell you that much um in the novel they were the kevin and dana are actually married and that to me would have been way stronger with their marriage because it's an interracial marriage in the 1970s america going back to the antebellum south as opposed to them just going out with each other in 2016 america yeah you could see the impact it's just it doesn't hold the same weight it doesn't hold the same weight one is lesser than the other um the fact that when they go back to antebellum america when they go back to antebellum america well basically antebellum is basically meaning before the civil war um occurred like basically living in the lands of slavery you could just see the way they treated um kevin they gave they let him stay in the house um they gave him food made sure he was well dressed up or the wayland family while dana they treated her like garbage you know they made her sleep in the quarters downstairs they didn't they didn't give her no sense of comfort even though she was there treating the little boy the little um um the little white boy who was um who always kept getting himself injured all the time and he was and basically she kept being transported to help him out in the book you could see the more close relationship but in the tv series it's not really played out so much so it almost seems like a fake um relationship in a sense and i didn't like that you know i the fact that they i'm just going to say it out now the fact that they made this into an eight episode series eight episodes for the first season and they come back with season 2 upsets me tremendously I'll tell you why it upsets me tremendously because a book like that is what 326 pages I believe it could probably be a little bit more I'm not sure a little bit less um basically I'll tell you like it, it it's just it doesn't make sense honestly it just doesn't make sense because you know you do you stretch it out over 8 episodes and you should and I think eight episodes should have been enough to tell for the whole entire book. You know, you could have done done it, done it in pieces for the whole entire book. In fact, instead they decided to build a giant story. God knows how many seasons they plan to have. Well, with the reviews that's in right now, which is now below sixty percent, which is considered rotten, it's up to the FX studio executives if they want to go forward with a season two. I mean, I would like to see a season two. because of the simple fact I want to see the completion of Miss Octavia Butler's work from their own interpretation from their own take of it from, of the novel I really do want to I want them to finish it but also take it as a as a learning point as a learning tree like this is not what you should do when adopting a novel I mean everybody has their own interpretation that's like in school when they give you a source material they want you to write an essay about it you have to write your own interpretation about it you have to talk about it from your own take you know it, sometimes some people don't want to stay true to the novel some people want to go off and create their own variation their own take on it i mean it's okay but um honestly for me i'm not i am not i'm always a stickler to the source material i like using the source material a lot i'm a source material type of guy i like to follow i like to stick to the program. I don't like to go off script and do too much, very way too much into the land of too much creativity. I feel like anytime you do too much creativity, it really stifles the work in a sense. And that's what happened with this series. It really stifled the work. The fact that you used eight episodes to try to tell a point really pissed me off and I didn't like it. Now I got to wait for season 2. Hope they that hope that the um Jenkins is able to uh, the showrunner Jenkins is able to address most of those to address the book completely and see if he tries to make it a little bit stronger a little bit more tighter in a sense if you know what i mean um going back to the review though adopted from Octavia Butler's groundbreaking supernatural novel of the same name Kindred is a pile im- imitation of the author's thought provoking interrogation of slavery's historical role in Instig- instigating contemporary systemic inequality 
Butler's clear eye themes are watered in this series. Her creative vision of time travel is reduced to an unimaginative parlor trick. Yes, and it was ridiculous. The time travel was it was ridiculous. It was just re- a parlor trick. I agree. It was ridiculous. And her inspired world building isn't honored. It just wasn't honored. You would just feel the sets were just bleh. Like, it just wasn't like that. You didn't feel feel like you were living in slavery times you just didn't feel it at all moreover butler's kindred isn't a bold reimagining of the 19th century racial politics the decade of the novel's publication through a present day lens this fx series on the other hand is a top-down oversimplification of the radical source material yes indeed it is a watered down version I hate comparing every project centering on enslaved black folks to Barry Jenkins, the Underground Railroad, mainly because I sound like a broken record, but that series is the gold standard for the series stories. Every project that has followed in its wake contends with the vast creative shadow Jenkins left. While Butler's work was published over 40 years, it itself upholding the mantle of these narratives. You can't help but notice how far short the televised version of Butler's novel, a work as rich and dense as Colson Whitehead's narrative falls short of Jenkins' miniseries. Unlike Jenkins' work, Jacob Jenkins has made Kindred more palatable for a streaming audience who are probably unaware of the source material, yet desired to see a narrative concerned with the kind of surface-level examinations common to so many present-day slavery-themed period pieces. Eh, I guess I agree, but it's still watered down to me. Kindred is filled with moments where the craft fails to match the story, opting for visually bland design choices at every turn. The plantation, the clothes, and the period detail lack a lived-in quality. When Dana and Kevin arrive at the plantation of the drunken enslaver Thomas Whalen, we learn that since the death of his wife and his remarriage to Margaret, the grounds and home has in some respects fallen into disrepair, and yet nothing in the set dressing tells us that. Even when relatives of the Whalens visit and shad Tom and Margaret about selling off the finer items, it doesn't immediately hit among the seeming obvious. That same generic aesthetic carries over to the series shooting. Inert compositions that reveal nothing about the characters, all decisions regarding coverage, and blunt editing that disrupts rather than cast a supernatural spell. As a result, you're never quite sure what visual tone the series wants to set or the rhythm we should feel. Instead, the supposed arresting tension that should command our attention is merely a bundle of teases that carry very little meaningful weight. Indeed, it does. It doesn't hold much weight at all. Throughout eight episodes, we learned that Thomas Young, sickly son Rufus, that's the little white boy that I mentioned earlier, he keeps getting hurt, falls from the tree, almost drowns, almost gets burned alive when he was a little newborn baby. I mean, honestly, this guy Rufus got a lot of issues. And somehow it, they keep, it keeps bringing Dana back into the antebellum stuff whenever he's about to face danger. It's like she gets teleported back, but we don't know why. How is she? How she gains that ability? They don't really show us. And um, he states uh, it's somehow connected to Dana's time traveling abilities. We also meet some of the enslaved folks who populate the plantations: a black overseer and a bitter childhood friend of Thomas named Luke, uh, an enslaved woman who Thomas pains for, and a free woman, the local healer, who many call a witch and might have a special connection with Dana. These characters dance on the prophecy of importance, but they are imperative only because the series tells us they are. And yet, even as mismatched pieces, puzzle pieces, none conjure a genuine curiosity for the viewer. So, that shortcoming wouldn't break the series if the toothless ungrainy dialogue of the unimaginative nature of Kevin Dana as characters were also uninteresting. Despite Stock's best efforts, Kevin doesn't acquire a personality beyond being a discomforted white guy. He never inspires any mystery or tragic hues supposedly lurking beneath his exterior. The same could be said of Dana as Johnson drowns in the freckleless writing. Dana isn't a fascinating enigma, nor is she a fully sketched person. 
with a discernible personality. She says nothing exciting and apart from time travel does nothing especially remarkable. Yes, Dana longs for her mother, but what else does she pine for? What are her other character traits? Why is she attracted to Kevin? It's all too ill-defined to be indolerable, to superficial, to pull you down towards this intended path depth. That is true. There's no purpose for their 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 relationship. Why they got together? This is what you get for doing a present day um, period a piece as opposed to a period piece where. At least if they had done a stick it to the 70s, they would have known they would have got married. They would have dealt with racial tension, their families coming together. And, you know, the book really goes into detail about that. And then having them go back in time, that would have been so much interesting as opposed to this. It's like, why did they get it? Just their characters are just so bland. Like she says, she's stuck. She's writing. She's trying to break in as a writer in Hollywood. Okay. Um, how long has she been trying to break in? Right? What interviews has she gone to? You know, it was just, it was just so static. Like it made you not want to care, honestly. Just made you not want to care at all. Um, why Dapper work as rich and unfringing as Butler Kindred without developing the racial, political, and cultural topics that make the source material so profound? Worse yet, why not consider what a story like Kindred means in 2022, especially since a brief mention in the series tells us that these events took place in 2016. If the showrunners have these questions in mind, it's never made apparent, and the uh, allological function of Butler's words is rendered moot in its incapable hands. By the time episode eight, by the time episode eight rolls along, teasing a second season, one can scarcely imagine returning to such an elementary, dramaless consideration of a masterwork. This version of Kindred is without a past, a present, or a future. Wow. That is per that is whoa. That is a big hit. That is true. It it is without a past, a present, or a future. It's just a bland piece of work that pisses me off as a viewer. I did not enjoy the series, but I do want to see a season two. I want to see them wrap it up in season two. I hope FX gives them a green light for one more season to close this chapter out because we need to at least something got made 43 years later and it shouldn't mean this this long but at least something got made and we could hold it to that honestly we could definitely just hold it to that and see what happens because i'm like yeah i'm just not good with it not good with it. i'm not happy with what i saw definitely just not happy with what i saw in this series i was disappointed when i saw the commercial i was like oh my god i'm hyped i can't wait to see it after watching it i'm like oh man i'm just like whoa what the hell did i just watch i felt disappointed and i just didn't enjoy it there were moments in it that was interesting but (sighs) like robert daniels said in this article it just wasn't sticking on the wall thank you um for listening to this review on kindred check it out on fx you tell me if it deserves a season two we'll talk about it next time thank you for listening good night peace love always one